So folks, one thing I hear from you guys all the time is that while it's very interesting to follow all of the dozens of ways seemingly that old Donnie is in massive legal trouble, it's honestly pretty complicated because everything seems disconnected and everything seems to bounce around and it's hard to keep track day to day, week to week what's happening. And I think it's critical to really do a bit of an overview and also cover some brand new evidence from within the fraud case led by Letitia James aimed at old Donnie and how it's really illuminated by recent developments, especially stuff in the last couple days and really since the massive midterm defeat. That Letitia James, even though the case isn't formally starting till next year, is still doing the work and still dropping bombs on Trump, his company and his family in that potentially bankrupting civil suit. But we have to cover some other things because they're incredibly important to build to that, to this new evidence that shows shows that old Donnie not only did bad things, but almost certainly did them with a malicious mindset, him and his company and all of that. But listen to this because it shows a growing anger with what Donald Trump has done. I mean, the Mueller team never had Trump's taxes. I mean, are you sure DOJ has them? And how long do you think they've had them? Yeah, I don't know how long that they've had them. It'd be nice for them to tell us. But Nicole, while I was on your show so many times, I've always said that Donald Trump's power is delay, delay, delay. And I agree completely with ex everything that Harry Littman just said. Everything. What Donald did is he delayed the ability to get these tax returns. Now, you may remember at the House Oversight Committee, you had people like Mr. Clay, you had Ocasio-Cortez, mm -hmm. you had Jamie Raskin, all asking me questions about Donald Trump's taxes, yeah. about how he moves money around. Mm -hmm. And I gave them the answer. They should have been able to get those tax returns immediately so that now with the change of the House, it wouldn't so be affected time. by it. Right. And this is unfair. It's unfair to America. It's unfair to the American people. You would never have gotten away with it. I certainly wouldn't. I would have 48 hours to turn them over right. based on the Southern District of New York's attitude. But this guy skates now for over two and a half years using weaponizing as my book, right? Weaponizing mm -hmm. the government, in this case, you know, the IRS in order to prevent the yeah. returns from being shown. And now it looks and Donald Trump is guilty of all the allegations regarding his tax returns that I put forth during that oversight hearing. Like, I think that's critical. Like, we, we still haven't even really got to the bottom of this. That Donald Trump has been weaponizing and has, when he was in power, all of these tools to, you know, attack his enemies. And I think this is critical because we're going to learn more and more. And one thing you might find from the Mar-a-Lago documents, which are now finally collected outside of the special master thing, is that we might get a true sense for some of the things Donald Trump has done. There's a possibility that there are pieces of evidence hidden within those boxes, not only connected to other cases, but also, frankly, could be shedding light on the actions of Donald Trump, the illegal and or immoral and or unethical actions of Donald Trump. And I think that's important to realize that we've only just scratched the surface. And speaking of Tish James, she has hinted that she feels documents that actually belong to her investigation are among the ones in Mar-a-Lago. And maybe now that they're finally in the DOJ's hands, maybe she will get them eventually once they've gone through them. Because there are supposedly some financial documents there and the consequences, which we're going to get to, of, of more financial documents of Donald Trump being hidden away at Mar-a-Lago will be very interesting to James. But this is also connected to the fact that the Republican Party is still tied to Trump and they're looking for a way out if possible. And this James lawsuit could be one of those things. Gerrymandered Republican districts. If you're Jim Jordan, if you're, I mean, it's just a matter of your own survival. And there's enough of those districts and enough of them that, I mean, I'm not suggesting it's the right thing, but it's what motivates them. And there they still go. need yeah. Trump's base. Right. Well, those gerrymandered districts districts have gotten you a four seat majority in the House. Well, correct. So, well, and, so and, much and for that. They're, they're, and, not, and they're not. They're not even. Can, uh, if they won in New York, that wouldn't have happened. And Colorado's <laughs> still out. So right. we'll and see. They're not. Yeah, and they're not even winning. You know, Kevin McCarthy thought they were going to get sixty votes, but again, George, it's uh, it's the antithesis of what I thought Republicans were about, which was winning. Like. 
you know, people would ask me my strategy. I said, we're going to burn their campaign to the ground and then we're going to salt the earth so nothing ever grows up there again. Well, they're and they go, what does that mean? And I said, we're going to beat them so bad their dog's embarrassed to walk down the street. Like it was that we got to win. But that's we what's can't happening do to them. anything if we don't win elections. And they just keep losing. And reason is, and, is and it's the voters also in Senate races, not just Jerry Mound and House races. <laughs> no, but this is I I want answers. I don't understand my old party. It's simple. It, it, it's simple is that they're hostage to the 20, 30, 40 percent right. of the party that is completely okay. um, high on this toxic Fox News propaganda and um, besotted with Trump still. And that's the problem. The problem, is, as, as, as Elizabeth just pointed out, is that it, it, you cannot you not cannot piss these people off. You're going to get primary and you're going to lose your election. So that's why you see this lack of courage. They don't you know, my, you're you're a congressman in one of these districts. You, you don't care. You want to you just want to win your race. You don't mm. want to get primaried. And it doesn't matter what happens in these swing, uh, swing, swing districts. And the other thing is, you know, we have this we have this former president who's going to run again, who is running again, announced he's running again, who's going to be indicted at least once, probably two or three times. So I think that's important to kind of get a sense, right? Like the party is in a sense still sickened, infected with Trumpism. And I know there's a lot of people in that party that still want him there, but a lot of folks are looking for a way out and they don't want to actually have to pull the trigger. They don't want to have to deliver the blow because as noted, there's a chance you get primaried, right? Like the Trump base might not even be the vast majority of the Republican party. It might only be like 40%, 35%. But if they're organized and everyone else is splintered, they still could have have a sort of power base within the GOP. It's why no one has out and out called for Trump's head as much lately, especially people that are currently serving, whereas, you know, they, they probably should. But this is a moment with all of these civil cases and all of these criminal cases, Donald Trump could be weakened both financially and politically, and that could put him in a bad space. And then we have to talk just a little bit more about the Mar-a-Lago stuff, because it shows, guys, how troubled he is, how the documents are absolutely devastating, and there are hints that this could be valuable to other investigations. And what is allowed part of this? Yeah, I would be in jail. If you found these documents in my house, I would be in jail. And you know what? For good reason. There, there's, look, I don't know the law, Ari, but like I, I saw a lot of classified information and there's like classified stuff that's sort of top secret or secret level that is, uh, you know, summaries of reports, analysis, et cetera. And then there's the stuff that Donald Trump had in his basement. I mean, I took one look at the cover sheets in the photo uh, that was released by the FBI, and it took me back in time to the days when I would walk across the hall from my office into John Brennan's office, who was the senior advisor for counterterrorism, went on to be the CIA director. Like, those are some of the most closely held special special access compartments that are secrets that are so secret, they're only close hold to a couple people. You have to be read into those and allowed to see that information. So yeah, that's serious, serious stuff that's just sitting in a basement that, I don't know, now is where Kanye West and, and other white supremacists seem to hang out every night. Right, which again speaks to what that facility is. And by their, if you buy their cover story for the other scandal uh, that people get in, Michelle alluded to that, people are uh, allegedly getting in uh, with no clearance, no vetting whatsoever. Uh, and so that's a huge problem for the substance of this, which is the men and women who risk their lives for America's national security uh, and whether this president and his team is endangering them. I say his team, Tommy, because that goes to what the special counsel is reviewing. Um, there's a new special counsel appointed by this attorney general to deal with January 6th and this very case we're talking yeah. about. This is, it's not coordinated. I'll, I'll remind viewers, there's no... Um, no calendar reason other than coincidence that uh, that you have a new special counsel and he gets this shot in the arm. But I'm curious what you think with your government experience, Tommy, about this, because that investigation has to go further to figure out, did people break the law uh, in the service of stealing or withholding the top secret documents? Um, and if so, I, I hate to be old fashioned, Tommy, but does that uh, in any way affect whether people think this person should be commander in chief again? Is that a fair thing to consider uh, as part of the metric? 
you're so polite about it. Yeah, it's a, it's a very fair thing to consider. You should not take highly classified documents and stuff them in your country club basement. And it also, it seems like from the reporting we've all read about this incident, that Trump or the people on this team might have lied about it. They might have moved documents after they were contacted by the FBI. They might have misled or lied to the FBI. There's a lot of layers of this. And this is where we get to James, guys, because I really feel like right now, there's momentum. And what James has done better than anyone, even better than Jack Smith, I know he's new, but she has done this better than anyone. She is the queen in the regard that she's looked at the other investigations and how they play a role in hers. She's looked at the criminal case against the corporation. She's looked, again, she's looked through the Mar-a-Lago inventory that was mentioned there and said, hey, maybe there are things here that I need. But critically, Two pieces of evidence have just been dropped that show Donald Trump is in more trouble than we thought because his main argument in the criminal case against this company that's going on right now, but in the far more important civil case is actually I didn't do anything wrong and it's my accountant's fault and it's my bank's fault that they you know didn't catch my errors when in reality the entire time he was either avoiding accountability from those sources or feeding them bad info for the first it says the Trump's biggest lender for years has been Deutsche Bank which worked with the family starting in the early 2000s but by about 2011 the bank's commercial real estate division had grown leery of lending to them according to James the Trump's then convinced the bank's separate private wealth division, which caters to high net worth individuals, to lend money for a slew of Trump projects, like a golf course, the hotel in Washington, and, and to do so, the family allegedly makes false claims about how much Trump was really worth. After media reports began questioning some of the bases of Trump's wealth and assertions about his net worth, Deutsche Bank sent the Trump a letter in 2020 asking about the reported discrepancies. According to James, the Trump simply didn't answer for more than a month, and in early December, the Trump organization's lawyer sent a note back to Georgia Bank basically saying he just got the letter. And then they immediately responded with another more detailed request for info and a warning that Trump could be in default of his loans if he had misrepresented his finances. On December 16, Garland replied, uh, Garten replied that he would try to get an answer for them, but they never heard back. And so we'll get to the accountants. But what this is saying is all of these arguments are hearing from Trump that, you know, and this is some like new stuff that, you know, he didn't know about this stuff. And, you know, the yeah, it, maybe there was mistakes in his calculations, but really isn't it the bank's job to be more careful about who they loan money to? And they were trying to figure this out here, maybe after the fact, but, you know, years ago now, it's 2019 or something, they were trying to figure out what, you know, what are you actually worth? What's your financial status? And Trump never answered, likely because answering would get his loans in big trouble. And here it goes to the accountants. It says they sent their accountants bad info. Trump, James's suit hinges on the state statements of financial condition that Trump's provided to banks and insurers. Statements that were supposed to be accurate pictures of Trump's net worth and the value of his various properties. James outlines a whole series of allegedly fraudulent tricks Trump's used, like the wrong, cal like using the the wrong calc valuation methods or pretending rent control departments weren't rent controlled. James said they also simply pushed numbers around to obscure the truth from accountants who had to compile the statements. And so what that's at least alleging is that Donald Trump is in trouble and his family as well and his company because they didn't simply just give info to accountants and then the accountants made errors. Accountants aren't magicians. You have to give them accurate info so they can calculate all of that info and give an accurate statement. If the data is bad and it it's knowingly bad and you lie to your accountants about that, it's not their fault, it's your fault. You can't lie to your accountant and expect them to still get it right. And so all of this is devastating for Trump. All of the legal strings are meeting together like a web and Donald Trump is trapped in the middle. And the first spider that's going to bite him, maybe it'll be Jack Smith, but it could be Letitia James and her bite is venomous.